Oh no. Oh no. I'm falling down the rabbit hole. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright. Welcome back to my lathe. I just built this not too long ago and I have a whole build series on actually going through what all I did for building this lathe. It is a spring pole lathe, so this uh, cord wraps around the work and every time it rotates in the right direction and then it rotates in the opposite direction. It's a lot of fun. It's a very, very enjoyable lathe. And so I've been playing with it and experimenting with a few different things and finally got up to the point where I want to make my first project. A pin. Um, now, normally a pin, this isn't the best lathe to turn it on, but I wanted to come up with a way of putting a mandrel on here and working with it. So we're going to work through a few different problems and uh, come out with a pin. So let's dive in. I'm going to be making this out of Peruvian walnut. Uh, number one, I like the color of it, but number two, and most importantly, Peruvian walnut is extremely easy to work with. It just flows well, it's buttery, and I figured from my first pin on the spring pole lathe, I would uh, err on the side of ease. I started by ripping it down into three-quarter by three-quarter blocks and then into the length of the uh, the tube from the pin kit. And uh, voila, we have a pin blank. <laughs> Next thing I need to do is drill a hole all the way through the blank to insert the sleeve into. And so I'm just using calipers to adjust and find the right bit. In this case, this bit is a hair smaller, uh, but that will work perfectly as it will allow me to squeeze it in. Next thing I can do is bore down through all these. Because I'm doing it on the shorter length as opposed to doing them when they're a full pin kit, I can just eyeball down it and be very accurate in the way it comes out. Just making sure I'm nice and square to the bit. And then voila, ETH pops out. And I have a hole ready to insert the uh, pin tube into. Next we need to glue this in place, uh, but to make sure the glue adheres well, I'm going to scratch it up with uh, some sandpaper. The, the sandpaper will put scratches around the ring so that the, um, the glue has something to adhere to and lock it in place. Uh, unfortunately, the only glue I had on hand was this uh, um, gel super glue, but eh, it worked well. I can just squeeze it in, and uh, they were loose enough that I could push them in by hand. It just took a good bit of force. And then the last little bit, I ended up having to just use a mallet to tap them down in. I'm very happy with the fit on them. That's about the, the force I like. Any more than that, you start ruining the bit any less than it might loosen up. Now with the spring pole lathe, it is a very slow way of turning a lathe, so it's very useful to remove as much as material as you can ahead of time. And so I like to take the corners off and make it somewhat octagonal, um, just roughly trim it down and bring it to a similar size. Now, to mount, to mount this mandrel on the, the lathe, I have to do a few modifications. Number one, I need a place for the cord to wrap around, and without it sliding off the end. So I decided to modify this mandrel and wrap some cord around the end. And then with that cord on there, I can then cover it in tape. I used a rubbery mat tape, and that would hold either end so that the cord wouldn't slide off the end of the mandrel. The next thing I need to do is have a spot for the live centered to connect into the end of this. So I used an awl to punch a hole and then came in with a small bit and I didn't put it in very deep, just, uh, just enough to make a little divot. And that divot then was a place that the live center could fit into the end. On the other end of the mandrel, there's already one in there for another live center, as it's supposed to be. <laughs> I could wrap the cord around it, and normally I wrap a cord twice, but with how small this space is, I thought, you know, let's just try it with just one. And I ended up doing the entire thing with just one wrap around it. It worked perfectly. Then I can fit in both ends into the live center, lock it in place, and we're ready to turn. And a little bit of test work on it, and I'm really happy with how it's coming out. So let's grab some tools and jump in. The first thing I'm going to do is grab a roughing gouge. This is a three quarter inch roughing gouge. I could use a little bit smaller one on this, but for the, the low power of this uh, spring pole lathe, the three quarter inch is actually a really nice size. It's not so big that it, it grinds down, but it's not so small that it doesn't do anything. And I really liked it for this. 
I also was playing with uh, a couple different bits, and so you can see I was trying different things, bringing it down and around, and experimenting around. I also tried a uh, pin kit from Rockler with the uh, uh, with the carbide heads, and I used to love carbide heads when I was turning. They're they're just so much fun. They're faster. They're easier. But for this, I just wasn't happy with them. I went back to the roughing gouge for most of the roughing and uh, went down through it and got them into a pretty close to round shape. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to try the carbide head again. But again, I just wasn't as happy. They were slower, they're more of a scraping, and with the slow RPMs on this, they just weren't as efficient. Not to mention, they left a rougher surface that just didn't need. So let's work with the traditional ones. Uh, now, traditionally, the skew blade would make me wet my pants. Um, especially with the power lathe, I just never liked it. But the slower speed on this, just letting it ride the bevel and sitting on there, holy cow, I was, I was, I was blown away. Uh, it is my new favorite tool. So from that point on, after trying it, uh, this was what I did all of the shaping on. It just worked very easily, and being able to control the speed and stop at any moment, this is actually a very, very fun, fun thing to do, and I'm, 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 I'm loving it. Next thing we can do is move on to a bit of sanding and shape it all down. Um, I use my bow sander for this and I can put in different grits into that to bring it up to a, a fairly nice working uh, uh, grit on there. But the bow sander allows me to handle it fairly well without having to go and get strips of paper. I wet down the grain to try and raise them up and get rid of some of the fuzzies and then hit it again with the sandpaper very lightly. I think this was a 300 grit if on top of my head. Um, but a, a fairly uh, light grit just to hit all the fuzzes from the raised grain, especially on the black walnut. The next thing I want to do is use a set of micro mesh to really bring this into a decent shine. And so I brought this up through the whole series of micro mesh and uh, got it to a, a really shiny wood, <laughs> which you don't normally see in something as porous as uh, walnut, uh, which I, 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 I like that. After hitting with the micro mesh, I decided to do a CA finish. Now, again, I didn't have any of my liquid CA, so I had to use the gel, which means I have to move a little bit faster. Uh, but it does mean it's a slower setting time, so it works fairly well. It has been a long time since I've done a CA finish, so it was kind of a learning experience, experience again. I basically put it on, I let it dry, usually about 30 seconds or so, and uh, then put on another one. And I repeated this three times and put on three coats onto all of them. It built up a bit of a finish that I could then come back and sand out. After three coats, it is onto the micro mesh. And I went through the whole series of micro mesh again to just buff it out, shine it out. And you can see I'm starting to build those layers. Um, after that, you can wet it, uh, use a rag and wipe it off and you can see how shiny it's starting to get. Now, normally I would stop here. I kind of like that. But as this is my first one, I was kind of experimenting. I really wanted to go on and I decided to do three full coats of three coats of CA glue. So nine coats total with micro mesh in between every third coat. And uh, holy cow, that thing got shiny. <laughs> I was, I'm yeah, very, very happy. So after another coat, and there's another uh, another coat of epoxy, and then another coat of the micro mesh, and this thing just got really, really shiny. Um, I don't normally do that. I like to see the, the wood grain more, but uh, this kind of plastic look actually turned out fairly well on this. After all those coats, I put on a paste wax, and I just buff it in with my finger, let it set, um, take off all the excess, and then I'll just let it sit on there for about an hour, uh, let it harden up a good bit. And then I'll bring in a rag and buff out that uh, the paste wax on there and to make it really, really glassy and shiny. Very, very happy with how this came out. I just, uh, well, yeah, you can see the reflection there. It is just, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> Last thing is assembling the pin. You can just follow the directions. I like to use the vise on my uh, my bench. You just have to be careful when pressing it in that it doesn't come in at a weird angle. And all the pieces can go together until you have a pin. Pop. Very happy. Um, for a first pin on the lathe, I am overjoyed. Uh, there are a lot of little flaws in this and things I could do better in the future. But for a first pin on this lathe, I, I'm happy. 
So there you have it. Uh, the mandrel idea for holding it, holding the, the rope in place worked fairly well. Uh, the problem was the, the cord actually put more torque on this than I expected and moved the tape off of one end. It worked well enough to finish this pin, but by the end it was starting to fray out. So I'm going to be coming up with a better way of putting a mandrel on this. And if you have any ideas, I'd love to hear those down in the, the uh, description below. Also, I know a lot of people are going to be asking all of the tools and items that I'm using in this. I'll leave a link to all of them down down below and kind of go through all those in detail. I am kind of playing with different tools, what I like on this, what are the, the laid chisels that work better one way or the other, and I'm hoping to have a video coming out on that as well soon. So yeah, this was actually really enjoyable and kind of a fun experiment to play with, and I'd love to hear your thoughts and ideas. What should I try next? And maybe we'll do those. So that's about it for today. I do want to say thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys really are the reason why I can keep putting out videos like this. If you'd like to find out more about that or help out with Patreon, you can do so right down there. Also, if you'd like to subscribe and see some behind-the-scenes footage, you can do that as well. That's about it for today, and until next time, have a wonderful day.